Hey, 4C Divers! Thank you for tuning in tonight. Welcome to our Facebook Live. And we have Kamala in the house. Everyone say hi to Kamala. All right. Okay, guys. So if you are on our uh, live presentation right now, we want to hear from you. Where are you listening in from? Give us a hello. And also, we want you to, in the comment section, if you've ever been on a dive trip with singledivers.com, give us the thumbs up. We want to know who's listening in. All right, guys? So make sure that you're giving us a thumbs up, saying hello to us. There's some people popping in. That's fantastic. Thanks, guys. We got a little bit of a late start here. I'm, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Facebook is a little ornery these days. So... Uh, We've been having some issues with the con connectivity, connectivity, connectivity. Anyway, so thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate it. And uh, February is an interesting month for us um, because we have never done the topic of travel before for one of our themed months. So we thought, you know, it's uh, the start of a new year and, uh, you know, COVID's kind of behind us and people are starting to travel again. So let's go ahead and... Uh, start doing some dive travel. And we've always partnered with uh, singledivers.com with Kamala over there um, to do trips. And we'll show you guys uh, on our website where the trips that we have planned for this year, next year, and beyond. So, um, you know, for traveling, obviously, you need, you need to know where we're going, what's it, what's it like. So check out our website. We also have uh, travel-friendly dive gear that you can buy and you can use that to get you places so that you don't take all your heavy stuff. So take a look at all the little goodies that we have on that landing page. Go to www.force-e.com and uh, take a look. Also, before 645, you want to make sure that you register for tonight. Uh, we have a, a great opportunity to give you guys something <laughs> that nobody else gets to have. So we'll tell you about that in a little bit. But it's... Uh, it's part of our VIP program with the singledivers.com in the uh, travel um, program that they have. And Kamala is going to be talking about that a little bit later. So make sure that you are registered. So go to tonight's um, event on our event tab and register. And we'll send you an email about how to become a VIP member. All right. Look at all those people tuning in. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. And um, let's go ahead. I'm going to bring in our slideshow. Let's see. Hold on. We got to make sure that it's working. Okay. There we go. So before we start, Kamala, go ahead and uh, tell everybody a little bit about um, who you are and, uh, and how you uh, became a travel lady. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I am um, Kamala with singledivers.com, and we were founded like nearly 20 years ago in order to solve the travel issues that a solo or single or um, somebody that didn't have a regular dive buddy would encounter with single supplements and just trying to get someplace, trying to save money. Um, so singledivers.com was founded. As it turns out, it solves a lot of problems that even couples have uh, traveling. And so along the way, uh, marrying a dive shop owner, I realized that dive shops have some unique tra uh, challenges with travel. So we married up with literally and figuratively, we married up with a dive shop program. And so we've been super thrilled to be working with 4C. They are really our best dive shop. And um, we're, we are their behind the scenes OEM, their travel. So it's really four seas travel, but we're kind of the uh, the glue that makes it all works for them. So that's kind of uh, how that got started, Nicole. All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and try this again. Bring this in the stream. There we go. Okay, guys. So uh, the topic tonight is our travel to Bonaire. And um, it's just many uh, dive destinations that are very popular. But uh, this one's really near and dear to both myself and Kamala because we traveled there quite a bit. And we know a lot about the uh, island and the dive site it's, that are there. And uh, we wanted to share with you guys um, what we have um, uh, on this island. So First, 
uh, we want to see where is Bonaire? So a lot of people um, hear that it's part of a, the Caribbean islands, but when you look at a map, it's not part of that chain of islands. It's actually uh, lies 50 miles off the coast of Venezuela. So if you see in this uh, photo here, you see the red dot that indicates Bonaire. Um, so it's part of the ABC islands. So ABC, A stands for Aruba, C is Curacao, and B, Bonaire. Well, I got those backwards. Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao. <laughs> you know, maybe I should get my five-year-old to teach me some ABCs. <laughs> All right. So um, the other thing about the uh, island of Bonaire is that it has a special uh, municipality within the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Uh, that's the current um, country it belongs to. So it's not um, part of South America. Um, it's not owned by South America. It's actually the Netherlands. So um, currently. Um, but the island um, actually has some really cool history behind it. So I'm going to give you a little bit of, of that. It actually was first documented in 1595 um, as the name Island of Brazil. Um, and so it didn't get its name Bonaire until a little bit later. But the island's total land area is uh, 111 square miles. And it's... Um, West of Bonaire is the little island called Klein Bonaire. So as you see in this picture here, um, it's kind of got like, I don't know, I would say like a wrist area. And that's um, kind of the mountainy area of Bonaire. So when you're going over to do the dives on the shores there, you're going to notice that you have to climb up the, um, the island a little bit to get over to the north end of it. Um, but then right there in the middle, um, you'll see that there's uh, some towns. The capital, I'm going to totally not be able to pronounce this because it is a Dutch uh, word, but it, I think it's called Kraklidik, Kranklidik. <laughs> wow. So if you guys know how to pronounce it, please go ahead and, um, and correct me. Uh, but you can see right off of there is that Klein Bonaire. That's the island. Um, and it's actually not inhabited. So there's nobody living on Klein Bonaire. It's just an island with vegetation, a lighthouse, and uh, fantastic dive sites uh, along the Klein Bonaire um, island, little island. Uh, so most of the... Uh, of this um, island here uh, has inhabitants uh, in the town, in the capital there. That's where you're gonna find most of your resorts and your big uh, town, which we'll go over a little bit later. Um, and then going down into the southern end of the island is where you're gonna find um, what we call the salt um, areas. I'll show you some of that in a little bit. Uh, down there is where it gets a little bit windier, so uh, your dive site's are a little bit harder to, um, you know, get to. And then you go around the corner, and there's this little bay, uh, that Lac Bay there. Um, not a lot of diving. They, they do some diving sometimes, but it has to be pristine conditions to do diving there. Um, but in that bay there, uh, there is some, uh, there's a sanctuary which I'll talk a little bit later. Uh, it's for flamingos. And basically, um, they do some other things there. There's the backside of Bonaire. There's really no diving um, to the north end of that island. As you can see, there's not much going. There's not a lot of, of roads that go over there. Um, if you ever go up there, it's very dry, deserty kind of um, not very lush. So uh, there's just the ocean and, and people just kind of go hang out there and they don't do much diving. Uh, geologists believe that Bonaire was formed relatively recently um, when it comes to all the islands that are in that area. Uh, it's an island that is um, essentially a coral reef um, that was pushed out of the sea. So a lot of the uh, rocks there are actually coral reefs that are dried and dead and have been like that for centuries. So, um, yep. So that is the island of Bonaire. So let's talk about the history and the people of Bonaire. So the history of the original inhabitants, uh, date back to 3,300 BP. And in 1499, the Spanish landed 
and started to colonize the island. And they forced the natives, the original natives, um, to the island of Hispaniola, Hispaniola, and to go work in their copper mines, um, which I spelled copper wrong. <laughs> Cooper, good job, Nicole. Um, so <laughs> uh, that's kind of what happened in the first portion of the island. And then the Spanish and the Dutch, uh, they became, um, they got into a war. It was called the 80 Years War. It was fought between 1568 and 1648. And, and it would go back and forth. And then finally, Bonaire was con conquered in 1636. And it was by the Dutch. So um, that's who originally uh, conquered it after the Spanish. Um, and of course, other countries were trying to move in and uh, take over these islands. Um, and the British came in and they started pushing around. And so the Dutch would lose control and then they would gain control and they would lose it. And then finally, the island was returned to the Netherlands under the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1814 with the British. So since then, it has been part of the Netherlands. And currently, 80% of Bonaire's population are Dutch nationals. Um, so you'll see um, lots of history uh, on the island if you ever go and visit, especially here in the main town of Bonaire. Like we said, the capital is Krakledic. I hope I said that right. It's near the ocean on the lee side of the island. I showed you guys in the on the map there. Um, beautiful, very colorful buildings in this little town. Uh, lots of fantastic restaurants, cute shops in the town itself, um, some amazing uh, chefs on the island, uh, different types of food um, ranging from seafood dishes to uh, dishes from uh, Spain and the Dutch. So there's lots of um, variety of food on this island. Also, if you were worried uh, about having... A supermarket. They do have a large supermarket on the island, which is very much like a supermarket you would see here in the United States. Um, and they also use the currency of the U.S. dollar on the island. So you don't have to do any money exchange when you're um, at the airport or do any traveler's checks. Okay, so that's the, um, obviously that's just a one shot of the town, but um, there's also um, a really pretty side of the town where it faces the, the ocean and you can walk along the, the cobblestone there and there's lots of great little like cafes for coffee or ice cream and it's a lot of fun to walk along the, the water there and have a nice night with uh, your friends. So, all right, so what is the climate like in Bonaire? Uh, it's got the warm, dry humidity with um, a little bit of a windy climate, like I said, on the other side of the island. Um, and the average temperature ranges about 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, obviously that can fluctuate, um, but most of the time it's a very warm climate in Bonaire. You, it's very rare that you're gonna need to take a winter coat. <laughs> However, you need to take a raincoat because the average rainfall is around 20, uh, 20 and a half inches of rain, and it occurs between October and January. So definitely make sure you take a rain jacket if you're going to be visiting during those times. Uh, the ocean temperatures around the island can fluctuate, um, just depends on the currents um, that are going around the islands, but anywhere between 78 degrees and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So a lot of divers uh, do take their wetsuits, um, their three millimeter wetsuits, and a lot of divers just go in a rash guard. So it's kind of up to you if you're a, uh, somebody who gets cold, if you need to take a wetsuit or not. So, all Nicole, right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, the weather's really been changing. So mm -hmm. we've done a couple of November trips now in um, Bonaire, and we never got a drop of rain. So even though technically November is part of rainy season, um, it's, it's, it's quite variable. Um, you'll note that the island is 
is not a tropical island in the sense that it's got lots and lots of rainforest and greenery. It's actually a more of a desert type of island. Um, so pretty much water is uh, either brought in or desalinated uh, for all their water purposes. But um, we've been finding it very, very pleasant in November and really not that rainy at all. Okay, Ox excellent. Okay, guys, so the Ecology of Bonaire, um, it is a fringed, it is fringed by a coral reef. So you can see in the picture here, that's Klein Bonaire off the, uh, off into the horizon there. That's a little island that has no inhabitants. And then you'll see here, this is um, right out front in the town area. And uh, you'll see that fringing coral reef that's there. So that light, light blue, that's all um, nice and shallow coral reef. And then it does like a drop. Um, so Kamala, would you call it a, a wall diving? Um, Bonaire has a couple of walls mm -hmm. um, in the sense of what we think of a straight up and down. Most of their wall diving is um, more graduated slope. So sometimes you don't particularly realize that you're on a wall. So you really have to watch your gauge. But um, they get some massive depths very, very quickly. And so Bonaire has become a very popular place for technical divers because they can get warm water, warm water depths, you know, 200 feet plus, which of course is what most of the technical divers like to do. Um, and they don't have to go very far offshore. So for recreational divers, you can choose anywhere you want in the water column and you can stay 30 feet and have a fantastic dive, 60, 70 feet, have a fantastic dive or drop down to a hundred feet and have a fantastic dive. Excellent. And so um, one thing to note, is that most of the divers, if they're going to do a shore dive, they're going to go along the lee side of the island facing the west southwest. If you're doing boat diving, um, obviously you can go along a lot of different areas of the island, but also you can get over to that Klein Bonaire, um, that beautiful island that you see in the picture there. So uh, you have a little bit more um, uh, access to some dive sites by doing boat dives when you're in the area. But we also have some of the best shore diving um, in the world. It, it's uh, it's noted by multiple dive magazines um, that it is one of the number one shore diving destinations. So um, lots, lots to see here, uh, which we'll go into a little bit later. But the entire coastline um, of the island was designated a marine sanctuary in 1979 in an effort to preserve and protect the delicate coral reef and the marine life that depends on it. So it was the first in the world, Nicole. Ah, that's good to know. So everybody hear that? It was the first in the world to become a protected marine sanctuary. And because it's that marine sanctuary, you guys, um, whether you're diving um, off of the boat or you're doing a shore dive, you have to buy into the marine sanctuaries. Um, I don't know if you want to call it permit, but uh, basically you buy into a user fee. So, um, it fluctuates the, the, you know, the amount, sometimes it's, um, included in your price of your package. If you're doing a, a, a dive trip with, um, a resort. And sometimes, uh, if you're just doing shore dives and you're doing booking everything yourself, you'll have to pay for it. Um, when you get onto the Island. Um, and a lot of divers I've seen, because when you pay for the, uh, the permit to use, it's this little coin, a little, uh, I don't know, plastic coin with a zip tie that you can put onto your BCD so that you can show. And if any park rangers come, they can say that you've, um, bought the permit. Uh, but a lot of people keep those as little keepsakes and they have them on their BCs. So when you return, they just keep adding on. And so I've seen a lot of divers, uh, with multiple chips on their BC rings um, from how many years that they've gone to do dives here in Bonaire. Um, okay. So, so that another thing about the Marine Park fee is that it's that fee that allows you to go see those exotic penguin, uh, penguins, let's me flamingos, <laughs> um, and some of the other amazing spots on the island that you cannot reach unless you've paid the Marine Park fee. So, Excellent. 
Okay, so on the island, um, you know, there's there's more than just diving. So there's some cool things to make sure that you're checking out while you're there, especially on that last day before you're supposed to go flying and you can't go diving. Um, they have these salt pans. They're like salt lakes or inlets, and they're close to the sea by the dead corals. And they are an important function because they ensure the collection and filtration of the rainwater. Um, and so when you're uh, driving to the lower part of the island, uh, you'll see these pink looking fields. That's all of the salt that's, um, that's there. And sometimes they even, uh, they, they gather it and they build it up and they look like pyramids. So um, there is a salt, uh, there is a, a salt production company. Uh, and what they do is they manufacture, they mine it, they take it out and there's a pier and they load it onto um, vessels and then they ship it out. Uh, the salt's usually used for industrial purposes. It's not necessarily the salt that we're seeing on our table um, and we're using in our food, um, but it's used in, uh, in production for uh, different machineries and other things that need commercial salt. Um, no and then cool. that is also, yeah. I'm sorry. I just wanted to, to say that actually they've now expanded their salt production and they do create a premier line of salt that many chefs around the world really, really prefer. And so um, that can actually be purchased as a great take home souvenir. You don't want to actually try to collect your own salt crystals, but they have a special line of their top end salt that you can take home either already in a grinder or you can actually have, it'll give you the salt crystals that are their top end salt and that you can put in your own grinder. And it's quite good, I might add. All right. So see, you learn something new every day because uh, last time I was there, they weren't doing that. <laughs> All right. So um, the other things that we can look at on the island is uh Bonaire has many dozens of caves on the island. Um, as a geological manifestation, they give a picture of the oldest history of the island. Um, so they have wet and dry caves that you can explore. Uh, lots of tours are given um, to some of the caves that are uh, accessible to us. Um, and there's caves that are for beginners and there's caves for people that have a little bit more uh, what's the word, uh, experience in caves. And you don't really do any cave diving though. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Kamala, do you know if there's any cave diving on the island? No, they, I don't think they're stable enough. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not certain that, that they're underwater enough for them to do that. I would say that if they had any cave, if there was cave diving, there'd be cave divers, but um, I mm -hmm. don't think there really is. Okay. So that is another thing you can do while you're on the island is go take a tour of the caves. Um, also on the island, uh, Kamala mentioned um, the flamingos. So Bonaire has a beautiful um, uh, collection of flamingos. Uh, they are, I mean, they can be all over the island, but most likely you're going to find them towards the tip of the so southern tip of the island. Um, and on that bay side. And that's actually where there is a flamingo sanctuary where uh, locals will help the population. They'll help especially the, the little youngsters um, if they're having issues with uh, getting fed. So they take them in and they'll, they'll feed them and get them healthy and turn them back out. Uh, they'll also help um, any animals that get injured from, say, getting hit by a car or that they're um, not, you know, doing well in the environment, they're, they're starving. So they'll nurse them back to health. And then always the goal for that sanctuary is to um, put them back into the wild. They don't like to keep them. It's not a zoo. It's, um, it's always to get them back into the wild. And I, when I went, I actually reached out to them and I said, Hey, is there something from the States that you guys don't get um, that you need for your sanctuary. And they told me Dawn dish soap. So sometimes the uh, animals get covered in contaminants um, and they need to wash their feathers. And Dawn dish soap is the best to get all that stuff off their feathers. So if uh, 
you're ever thinking that you're going to go there and you want to go visit the sanctuary, uh, just find them on Facebook and ask them, hey, what is it you might need? Because they love getting donations. They also do money donations as well. So um, also on the island um, are the donkeys. Yes, they this is a must do when you're here on the island. So cute. There is a sanctuary uh, of donkeys that um, I don't know much of the history uh, of the sanctuary, but um, lots of animals were brought over to the island from when the Spanish um, came over. And one of them was a donkey. And so these guys, uh, they do have a sanctuary where they can live, but then you'll also see the wild ones along the island. And so as you're driving around the island, you might see them along the side of the road. So please, please, please drive carefully. We do not want to hit one of these guys. Um, and also, Kamala, do you know, I, I think they don't want you to feed the animals, but you'll see people stopping and trying to feed them. Um, I think it's, is it a law to that you could get busted for? Do you know? Well, they certainly discourage it because yeah. it draws the animals to people's cars. And then if they're not paying attention, either the driver or the animal, somebody's going to get hurt. So they certainly discourage it. I'm not 100% certain if it's a law against it. Um, if it isn't, it probably should be because the animals have a tendency to be the ones that are harmed. You know, they start to get domesticated. They see people, they come up, they start annoying them. Some people think it's cute. Some people don't. So sometimes the animals get kicked or abused because they're being a little too aggressive. And it's really all because we kind of created the problem. Yeah. Okay, so diving. That's another thing you can do in Bonaire. <laughs> the number one thing to the do. The number one thing to do. Famed <laughs> as one of the best Caribbean dive destinations, you can do both shore diving and boat diving. Um, and so we're going to give you a couple of the dive sites that we, we really like and recommend. Um, but, you know, when it comes to uh, doing the shore diving, uh, if you are trying to plan a trip, to Bonaire, you can fly over. And a lot of the times, um, the dive, there's some dive shops that actually rent vehicles and you can rent their truck. And it also comes as a package where it also has tanks. Your, your, your tanks are, are also part of the package price of your rental. And so what's really cool is you can get the truck and either go to a hotel or they have Airbnbs um, on the island. And you can drive around and do your shore dives. Um, and so you take your tanks with you. And then you, when you're done, you dip, go back to the dive shop. You just pull in. They take your tanks out. And then they put your new tanks in. And then you go. So it's kind of like a cool way to do like in a little exchange. So that's the way that they do it if you're just going to be using um, the dive shops with rental um, tanks and trucks. And one thing to note, if you are going to be doing shore diving um, using the truck version, um, you want to make sure that you're not keeping anything in the vehicle that is uh, of that you don't want it to be stolen. Um, <laughs> and I hate that I have to put this in the presentation, but um, there is a lot of theft on the trucks uh, because they know we're divers. And so we must have really nice equipment and cell phones and things like that. So you really only take what you need to go diving and everything else gets left behind in the hotel. Um, I even, I don't even take, um, like any food or anything, because they'll they'll break in for any anything, food, water, stuff like that. So if you are, just hide it underneath the seats if you're bringing water or food. Um, but definitely leave those cell phones at home. Or if you want to take it in one of those canisters, dry canisters with you, you can. Um, the keys, you want to take them, put them in a dry canister with you when you're diving. Uh, I've also been told, leave your windows down so that they don't want to bust the windows. So... Uh, I know it sounds really crazy, but that is kind of the way they do it, uh, the shore diving over there. So uh, it's, a, it's unfortunately, it's just like a crime of opportunity. So the best recommendation is exactly what you said at the end. And that is leave the truck unlocked, leave the windows cracked. 
so that if they want to get into the truck, they can, and they're going to go, ah, there's probably nothing in here because they left it unlocked and they left the windows down. If you leave it locked up, even if there's nothing in it, then people have a tendency to think there must be something valuable in it. And so they will break windows and you will be responsible, unfortunately, for that. Um, and the insurance policies, because there is a, a high amount of this crime of opportunity, there's no real there's no real crime on the island. Like you're not held. There's no dangerous crime. It's just this crime of opportunity with the trucks because it is kind of a really poor island. So um, the uh, the strongest recommendation is if you do rent a truck, if you if you go to explore the island, then never lock anything up and never take anything with you that you won't have on your possession. So. I even, I, my eyes are really sensitive and I have to wear sunglasses. I take my sunglasses and put them in my BC pocket because they'll take that. So um, shoes, that's another thing, you know, try and hide them behind the seat or under the seat or in the wheel well of the truck um, or take them down to the, to the beach with you because sometimes uh, you have to kind of walk along some, some rocks to, to get there. And if you're not wearing, if you're wearing full foot fins, uh, you'll want to take those shoes with you. But um, anyway, so that's a little bit about the shore diving and how we how they do that. Um, it's really easy to find um, the dive spots uh, along the shore because if you've ever been there, there's these big rocks that they've painted yellow and it usually will have the dive site's name on it. And actually, I have a dive site right here, Carpata. That's the rock that I'm talking about. So along the shore, uh, along the island, if you see a yellow rock, it's usually a dive site. So and they'll um, it's easy to look up what the difference uh, depths are and dive planning is for these um, different dive spots around the island. Um, I picked Carpata just because I I did that dive and I really enjoyed it. It's very, very easy um, to gear up right at the truck and to walk down and get into the water there. Um, Bonaire has over 350, uh, 350 fish species and nearly 50 different corals that you can admire. You can find many of these magnificent species at this dive site. Um, and there's only a few stairs that you have to take down um, to get to the water and then you can submerge and do a nice shallow dive there. And it's really good for beginners. And also if you have people that are not diving that are on the trip with you, it's a great snorkel site as well. Um, so that's a fan favorite for shore diving. And boat diving. And boat boat diving. diving, correct, Wonderful sorry. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> yep, you can access any of these shore dives, you guys, we can access from boat diving. We're gonna talk a little bit about the boat diving here in just a second. Um, all right. The other um, famous uh, shore dive is Thousand Steps. Don't worry, you guys. Despite what the name implies, it's only 72 steps down to the beach. <laughs> so you do gear up at the truck and you walk down with all your gear. Um, and again, this one, it, it the actual dive site is nice and shallow and it's perfect for diving and snorkeling. However, a lot of people, especially for if you have any knee injuries or back injuries, they don't like doing the, the uh, stairs. So you have to be careful about doing that one if you have any injuries um, that you don't want to have flare up. Um, but if you get down and do this dive um, from the shore, right, if you see um, in the picture here, that nice blue area, just right in that area is big formations of staghorn coral. So um, very, very neat to be able to dive and see the beautiful staghorn coral. And then on the other side of that is where you kind of have, again, it's not a wall, but it's like a little bit of a, a sloping drop. And that's where the boats like to go. And it's got some fantastic coral, especially sponge life. Um, the sponges, they kind of hang off um, the side and it's just amazing for some wide angle photography in this area. So um, if you're going to do this site uh, on a boat, uh, they have mooring balls that they hook up to. Um, that way they're not throwing anchors in and they're not damaging corals. And the uh, most of the boats have dive guides and they're going to take you along and show you the best um, spots on that dive during that dive. So um, 
Yep. So uh, that's thousand steps. Kamala, did you want to make any anything about the thousand steps? I just love doing it from the boat because then there's no steps. <laughs> then there's no steps. That's correct. <laughs> All right. Um, another fan favorite you can do both shore and boat diving is salt pier. We talked about the salt pier a little bit earlier um, about the salt production. Um, you can, um, this is a must do you guys. Uh, the salt pier attracts many fish and lots of schooling fish. So snappers, grunts, goat fish. Um, that's all the cool life that lives right underneath the pier in the pillars or in the columns there. And lots of sea fans, sea whips, um, and sponges um, are all attached to those columns that are underneath the pier. Um, I've seen octopus here. Um, you know, obviously, they're camouflaged, but if you go nice and slow, I've seen octopus here. And the last time I went, which was before COVID, so that would have been 2019, um, in the shallow area, um, before you get over to the pier, um, it, there's a lot of seagrass there. And so lots of green sea turtles hang out in that area. And I saw small little juvenile green sea, sea turtles at this area and ph photographed them. And it was amazing. So um, lots, lots to see on this dive. It is a must do. And from the boat, again, uh, the boat will um, anchor off of the salt pier. Um, they do not come inside where you're seeing this picture. Um, they say off. And so you come over to the pier from the boat, you do your dive around there, and then you return back to the boat. Um, Kamala, do you have anything you want to add about boat diving salt pier? Um, whether it's boat or shore diving, if there is a ship in port, you're not going to be able to dive the pier. So one of the nice things about being with a uh, top tier dive operator is that you can effectively put the order in that you want to go to salt pier as soon as there's not a boat. And so, um, you're able to get there before other operators do, or even before the shore divers realize that, oh, there's not a boat there today, we can actually dive. So kind of a yep. nice bonus. Yep, definitely. Okay. Um, all right. So you guys, we talked about um, the coral reefs that we have and, and some other structures like up here. But there's always, um, you know, that really cool wreck dive that everyone needs to go and do. The Hilma Hooker. This is a uh, beautiful wreck dive to, um, to do. People from all over the place come over just to dive this site. This was a cargo ship, and it was sunk relatively close to the shore. Um, so if you're diving it from shore, um, you're going to have to kick a little bit to get out to there because it does sit um the deepest point is 100 feet um well if you look at the way that this wreck is it didn't wreck um sitting upright well at least it's not upright anymore <laughs> i don't know if like a hurricane pushed it over but basically um what you're seeing is the boat is pushed over and so the deepest is going to be where those towering um uh pillars are that's going to be the deepest part of the wreck um and the shallowest is going to be back up there towards the bottom of the boat and going up towards shore. Um, things that um, that we want to to look at here is that it is um, accessible to all, but you know, advanced recreational divers is is you know something that we want to encourage because it is in a hundred feet. So if you haven't done a deep dive, um, go ahead and get that certification with a dive instructor so that you can make sure you don't miss out on the Hilma hooker. Um, some other cool things is that uh, when you're diving through it, there's some nice open areas so you can penetrate this wreck um, and do it so that you're not um, injuring the wreck or yourself. There's also beautiful big tarpon in this area. Um, what's great about that is they're usually pretty friendly. So if you've never seen a tarpon, this is a good spot that you're going to find them. And you can actually see it on this map. You'll see see those bigger fish at the bow of the ship. That's indicating the tarpon. And that's where they usually hang out is right at the front of the boat there. 
Um, and uh, obviously, always use caution if there's any fishing um, line or if there's any um, wiring uh, that you see, make sure that you are staying clear. Do not penetrate the wreck if you see that um, stuff. There's some re like uh, iron rebar that sticks out sometimes. So please, please, please be careful um, when penetrating this wreck. Um, also at the stern, um, beautiful uh, photo op of the propeller. Um, actually, there's a picture in, I think, the next slide that we have from uh, the last trip that uh, a photographer, EJ, went on with uh, with you guys, and he took a picture of you, Kamala. Oh, so, <laughs> I was going to say, usually I'm taking the pictures of people on the stern, and we'll do that for anyone who wants their picture, because that's only in about 60 feet of water, so... Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It, it's a lovely place if you don't really want to go deep, get your picture taken. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So um, anything else you want to say about the Hilma hooker? Um, the only thing you missed, uh, not really missed, but if you, if you're not really into wreck diving there, if you look behind on this picture, you'll see the reef right behind it. So you actually can do a good portion of your dive on the reef itself. Mm -hmm. um, rather than doing the wreck, but you will, if you are on a boat dive, you will need to go up and down the line. And that's nice because the boat does have permanent, um, the island has put permanent mooring lines onto the wreck. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are three different mooring lines that you can go up and down. Um, one on the bow, one on the stern, and I think one midsection. So that gives you um, a fixed point to do a controlled ascent and a controlled descent. And even though the water is very clear, um, it, it'll get deceptively deep pretty quickly. So it is always, always nice to have that line for safety purposes. Um, and especially if you're just a little bit newer, maybe just recently got that certification, that's going to give you a super safe and easy way to ascend and descend onto the wreck. Excellent. Good point. Okay. All right. So when are we going to Bonaire? Well, Kamala, when are we going? <laughs> We're going to go for Thanksgiving. Um, that was actually a 4CE member request. So on our August trip, we had several people from 4C saying that they really wanted to go, but they would love to take advantage of the Thanksgiving holiday. So lo and behold, asking you shall receive. So I set this year's trip up for the Thanksgiving timeframe. Awesome. And so when we do this trip, you guys, uh, we stay at the resort. It's called Divi Flamingo Beach Resort and Casino. Um, what you're looking at right now is a picture of the um, the resorts. It's their dock um, slash pier. And so um, what's fantastic, I, so it's, I've actually done both, you guys. I have done d like diving and staying at with Divi. And I've also done where you go and do, a, you know, the truck and you get a, a hotel on the island. So I've done both and I've loved both. But what I loved ab most about going to Bonaire and doing the Divi is that this right here you're seeing is actually their house reef. And basically you can just jump off the back end of that um, dock there and have the most coolest dive. I mean, I've, not only is it cool during the day, it's also a great night dive. And when I've been there, um, I remember where I'm shining the light and I just see little fish in my light and then the tarpon come over and they go oh, and they grab it and they it's like you're fishing for the for the tarpon. You're helping them get their food. Um, I've seen all types of stuff um, off the house reef here. I've seen spotted eagle rays, um, big schools of beautiful parrotfish um, off of this reef. So what's cool about diving and going and doing this trip is that you're going to get five days of three tank uh, boat dives, but you're also going to get unlimited shore diving. And so this right here is your shore diving. Um, you just, whenever you're like, okay, I, we're not doing boat dives and I've already eaten. I don't want to sit by the pool. I want to go do a dive. So you just walk on down here, you grab the tank, you hook up and you go for the dive. So 
Um, that's 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 the house reef of the Divi uh, Flamingo Beach Resort. Couple little insider secrets. So they hold a massive photography contest every single year, and it's hosted at Divi. Um, it's for the entire island of Bonaire, um, and it is a it's a world renowned photography contest, and. The divers, they go out on the boat dives, they take their pictures, and at the end of the week, they submit their um, um, their winning submissions. Well, as it turns out, for the last five, six, seven years, the winner has been somebody who stayed at Divi. But the pictures didn't come from the boat dives. The pictures came from the shore dives. So as you look at the dock and you see the two sets of stairs, if you go to the right, that's the direction that most of the photographers who have won the outstanding photographer contest that's hosted annually um, on the island, that's usually the direction, although they can go the other way, but that's usually the direction they go. And they get amazing interactions with uh, marine life. They have no time limits or restraints other than their own um, gas consumption. And they get these amazing pictures and one other unique thing about the island of Bonaire is that because of so many divers being there and visiting the fish, the fish are really, really friendly towards divers. Like they're not that skittish. They don't run off because they see a diver. They don't get spooked if you flash them with a camera light. Um, some of them actually truly perform. I mean, they just sit there and they, they literally change their position for you. You don't have to move. The fish is doing the work for you, giving you different angles. Um, the If you go to the uh, left, as you look at the the dock, um, there's a little further over basically where the words are on the slide, there's a manta ray that comes and plays right there. And that area is in front of one of the beachside restaurants. And so people have been sitting there eating their breakfast and watching a manta ray play in the little bay area. Um, if you look at the light colored blue and then the dark blue, that's not very far offshore. And that dark blue will drop down to 130 feet almost instantly. So if an instructor is wanting to do a advanced class or a deep class, they don't have to go very far offshore to get the depth that they want. Um, and again, it's not a brutal drop off. It's, it's a little gradual, but it's, it's distinct enough that you'll notice that you're getting deeper. So you do want to watch your gauge, but if you want some depth, you don't have to go very far. And like Nicole has said, um, in that white or light blue area, that's the tarpon fishing grounds. And you can sit there for 30 minutes feeding the tarpon and never get tired of it. it, it it's, it's really unusual. Um, there are tons of, of octopi, um, squid during the dives, um, both day and night. And uh, there's seahorses on the house reef. There's frogfish on the house reef. Um, there's pretty much everything. Uh, it's it's really a lovely dive and it's nice stairs. They're wide. They're easy to come up. Um, and underneath that orange roof are where all the dive lockers are. So there's internal dive lockers and then there's external dive lockers. Um, actually, there's also dive lockers as you walk towards the uh, orange uh, roof part. You'll see that there's dive lockers along the uh the actual dock itself as well. So it's just super suited for wonderful shore diving as well as easy jump off for boat diving and a five minute to 10 minute walk to the best restaurants in all of Bonaire along the beachfront. Um, so it's really kind of a, a best kept secret. And they have a casino right on property. So if you like to gamble or just want to check out something different, they have a spa on the property. They have a casino on the property. You can rent a vehicle. Um, with gas as high as it is, it's just kind of nice not to have the sticker shock at the pump because a a liter of gas is almost twice the price as a gallon of gas in the U.S., 
So that's a pretty big island and the gas goes pretty quickly in those little trucks. They're not super fuel efficient. And so as a result, you can end up with a fairly sizable gas bill. Um, we had some shore divers on uh, one of my last trips there and they went to dive all the, you know, great uh, dive spots. And when they came back, they ended up spending, and we did most of them from the boat, the same spots. And they ended up spending more money doing the shore diving package than they would have if they'd done the boat diving, just because the between the rental of the truck and the price of gas being so high, um, it, it just actually is cheaper and more economical now to do the boat diving. Yep, definitely. And if you look at the, the trip, um, you guys, we have it scheduled as eight days, it's seven nights. And we also include breakfast and lunch and two group dinners. So when you're looking at, you know, trying to figure out doing this on your own or do this with a group, um, you know, doing it as a group, actually, you end up saving money uh, when you do as a group, especially with us, because you can call them and get pricing. And we actually, we work with these um, resorts, especially this one for years. And so we get the best pricing that we can do, we can get you guys. So um, we, we also add amenities that don't exist elsewhere. You know, right now we're in an ever fluctuating state of pricing. Um, but we have a, uh, this particular trip has a yoga expert on it. And so we're going to offer yoga in the mornings. We're going to talk about how yoga helps divers. And you don't have to be able to do any exotic poses. In fact, the whole approach is really about how do I, as Susie Diver or Joe Diver, extend the comfort and safety of my diving career? How do I, are there some yoga positions that I can do that will keep me safer on a rocking boat? Are there some positions or things I can do that will um, help me counteract the tank forward position that we find ourselves in when we're walking around with a tank. Most of us have a tendency to lean forward a little bit because of the weight of the tank. We're not ramrod straight walking around with the tank on our back. And after a while, we need to counteract that tank forward position. And so yoga actually can do that in a low strain, um, non uh, low impact, low strain, um, e non-eventful in terms of a negative word away. Um, and, and we are going to show you all of that um, on this trip with our uh, complimentary um, uh, yoga professional that will be on the trip. Um, and of course, we're hoping that um, so many of you are going to want to go that we can twist Nicole's arm to go um, <laughs> or one of our other amazing shop staff to join us. And then we'll be able to offer all kinds of wonderful specialties, uh, knock that advanced open water out. If you haven't had a chance to do it, maybe get a deep certification. It's a perfect venue for that. Um, and, you know, it, in time, if we've got some people that are interested in learning tech, I know we have some tech instructors at the shops. And so we might be able to put together a tech light or intro to tech trip. Um, Bon Air just basically has something for everyone. That's why it's one of the few destinations where we can mix a boat um, of all skill levels, but we can match our divers uh, in terms of dive buddies, as well as in terms of dive guides, so that everyone gets the kind of dive that they want and nobody is holding anybody up and nobody feels like, you know, oh, I had to wait forever for those photographers or the photographers don't go, oh, you know, I was just getting the perfect picture lined up and somebody's fin smacked the seahorse. It's, it just doesn't work that way. We, we really, um, 4C and Single Divers has really perfected the way to give 
every single diver the perfect dive experience and yet still have the fun and camaraderie of a group and the economy of scale. Um, and I will say also a little bit of clout. Um, we pick the best dive guides and um, we get perks that, that other groups don't get. And I, after 20 going to um, uh, Divi for 20 something years now, I'm proud to say that there's, there's nothing really that we can't ask for that we won't get. And so all of that gets passed on to um, 4C, which is one of the reasons that they like to partner with us. And we love partnering with 4C because we know we're going to have great divers. We know that we're going to have exceptional co-trip leaders. And, um, you know, all of that makes your vacation extra special. We leave nothing to chance. Awesome. So, and, you know, the great point too is, you know, Kamala has been there so many times. She knows who to, who we need to dive with. She knows where, what dive sites we need to go to, the must-sees. So that's another reason to get on this trip. Um, and an, another thing too, let me go to this next slide is, Here's, here's some other pictures of the Divi Flamingos. They've got multiple fleets of boats. Um, they have lots of great dive staff. Some, some of their staff has been working there for years, and some of them are some really great photographers, um, or they're just really good at spotting the specialty animals that you're looking for. So um, that's another reason to, to do this, uh, this trip. And there's that picture. There's Kamala right there. Uh, at the Hilma Hooker, if everyone can see the lower left there. Um, yeah, that's the one that I'll take of everybody if you all want that shot. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> um, in the middle there, uh, this is standard what the rooms look like, you know, nice and clean, nice big fluffy beds. And then also in the lower right, you know, you can have dinner right there overlooking the water. Um, you know, we've got lots of um, great options for uh, food at the resort. And like Kamala said, there is also a spa and a casino uh, and a pool. So um, actually, I think there's two pools, right? Yep. Two pools. Two pools. So um, and so Kamala, really quick um, for rooming options um, for this trip, uh, you can do um, ocean side and you can also do pool side, right? Is that the two options? Um, yeah, basically we have we're giving away complimentary upgrades to ocean view rooms so you pay for um you pay a rack rate and you could either get upgraded to a suite or you could get upgraded complimentary to an ocean view um, if you absolutely positively have to have an ocean view or your vacation is going to be you know just not perfect for you then you can pay an upgrade fee but I'll give you a little hint. Last year, almost everybody got either a studio upgrade, uh, which are really, really big rooms, um, and they have a built-in kitchen, um, and, or they got an ocean view upgrade, which are slightly smaller rooms, but of course the ocean is right outside your window. So you can pay a little extra for those upgrades, but so many people ended up winning them as... Um, um, you know, bonuses that I don't really suggest anyone pay the extra because you almost always end up with one complimentary. Excellent. And talking about your room, um, when we were showing you the picture of the, um, the dock and she was talking about the dive lockers, guys, you don't have to take your dive gear and lug it back to your room. You can leave it right there in your locker. You're the only one who has the key. And basically you get done off the boat, you throw your stuff in your locker, it hangs there and dries. Well, obviously they'll have fresh water rinse, but it hangs there and dries and you don't have to take it back to like your balcony or the bathtub in your hotel room. So that's another great perk about diving at this um, resort. You know, one other thing, Nicole, is that let's say we get, you know, eight, 10 people from um, 4C. I can actually get you guys your own boat. So 
Um, we have lots of flexibility because as you had mentioned, the boat has, uh, the, the hotel has a massive um, fleet of boats. And, and if that's not enough boats, they can get more boats. So I love the flexibility that we get. Um, also the package pricing has a third boat dive in it for uh, the same price that some places charge for only two boat dives uh, a day. And these are legitimate boat dives. It's in fact, the third boat dive every day is one of the 10 different, uh, I think there's actually 15 different dive sites on Klein Bonaire. And we have three afternoon boat dives. So we get at least five different Klein Bonaire sites in the afternoon. Of course, if we want to go someplace else, we can ask. But when you can go to Klein and you can't shore dive Klein, Klein can only be done through boat diving, then why would you not go to Klein every single afternoon? Because it is some of the best diving on the entire island. So, so moving right along, are you guys excited? You ready to book? I bet you you are. So let's go ahead and introduce just really quick um, the singledivers.com. So uh, Kamala, you guys are the world's only provider of group trips designed for single or married but buddyless divers. So single divers is not going to hook you up with somebody. Sorry to everybody who thinks that we are matchmakers. We are not. What it means is that if you don't have a dive buddy or maybe you're the only person in your family that dives, but you want to get on some of these cool trips to go and travel and dive, this is the um, group for you. So um we, um, <laughs> their motto, our hookups are to tanks. <laughs> I love that hook. I love that line. Um, and so why travel is because they will run trips year round, um, whether they're domestic, Caribbean, Indo-Pacific trips. Um, and every year they're offering sometimes um, new destinations. Um, sometimes the fan favorites get offered every year. And they guarantee that their vac vacations will run. Um, they will not be canceled as long as one person signs up. So um, that's the great thing. Sometimes uh, when you go with some of these um, dive shops that don't have that guarantee, um, they end up telling you, oh, we didn't get enough, you know, to go. So we, we got to cancel. And so you don't want that to happen. You get excited when you want to book a trip. Um, discounts from travel partners and manufacturers and so much more. Um, some of these trips that uh, Camilla's plan has really cool themes to them. Sometimes uh, when they go, go over to Cozumel, they'll do like um, a grilling and chilling where they like have, you know, chefs teaching you about um, making food over in that um, uh, department. They've also had, um, you know, music and entertainment. Um, they've also had demo um, opportunities where Big Blue Lights has come in and uh, let us, you know, demo d dive lights while we're on the trip. So many cool things um, that happens with singledivers.com. So you probably want to know, how do you book your trip with them and with 4C? Well, join the 4C VIP member program. And Kamala is so generous that she is allowing for us to join for free. So you get early booking discounts, access to 24-hour booking capabilities, Guaranteed same gender roommate or single supplement is free and free membership level on host booking sites. So how do you join? Well, you just need to email travel at force-e.com and we will get you set up. Um, Kamala, basically what they need to do is um, they need to figure out a screen name. That's the yes. first the first step is to come up with a fun and fantastic screen name. Now, if your name is Nicole, Nicole equals fun already. And it's already <laughs> taken by the original. Um, but so Nicole is Nicole. But I'm wreck winch because I like diving on wrecks. And you, we only ask two things. We ask that it be something that really kind of reveals your personality. And then we ask that if you're going to use your real name, just use your first name. Um, unless your last name just happens to be something kind of innocuous that you can turn into a, a play on words. But um, we're old school. So we've always been of the mindset. This was, we started way before Facebook. So we didn't use our real names. We actually kept 
that a little on the QT or quiet side, as they say. So um, if you do want to use your real name and you want to be Susie Diver or Diving Diva or whatever, you can do that. Um, uh, or Nicole, because you are Nicole, there's only one. Uh, but you could be Diver Dave or something like that. And if you are stuck and need some help, Nicole and I are great at coming up with uh, fun names, either based on your career. Um, you know, we just had a guy join today called Retired uh, Firefighter. Okay, so we know what he used to do for a living, right? And now he's, he's also a diver. So it can be anything you want it to be. Just don't make it like, you know, your initials, half your birthday, and, you know, your high school locker number, that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, and just, just to clarify, so this is for first time members, um, this free program. So um, this is, we're trying to get you guys to really get excited and want to start joining our trips. All right. Um, and then, once you choose your trip, so, okay, obviously, if you really want to go to Bonaire, because we had a great presentation about it, and of course you want to go, um, you can choose Bonaire. But if you see another one that is being offered, um, you choose your trip after you've um, choose your screen name. Um, and then um, you can get logged in and you add it to the cart and you choose to pay the deposit or you can choose to do the full trip amount. Um, yeah, we and have got one important step, Nicole. Sure. Sorry. Um, after you've chosen that fun screen name, then we have to put you into the 4C VIP category and it's a manual process. So um, some people think that, oh, I set up my screen name and now I want to book that trip and it won't let them book it because we haven't actually put them into the VIP category. So if you don't want to pay for the membership um, and you want it free, which is one of the perks of the VIP program, then as soon as you set that screen name up, you email travel at 4C.com and let us know uh, what your screen name is, how you found out about us, and then we will put you into the special category. And once we put you there, we'll pop you back a message saying, okay, now you can book and we'll give you a quick little uh it's three or four steps. We'll send you the steps to remind you again how easy it is to book the trip. But don't miss that critical step of creating your screen name and then letting us put you into this special category because it's not automated. So the only way you get in it is by virtue of being part of the 4C family and sending that critical email. Excellent. And... Um... The other thing too about when you pay for your um, trip, you have um, you can do the deposit or a full amount, and they will actually give you a discount if you pay cash, i.e., online check payments, saving you approximately three percent off the trip price. So just keep that in mind if you guys are uh, booking. Um, details and communications. Um, once you've booked a trip, uh, the lovely lady that you're listening to she is very very good at making sure that you know everything you need about um where to you know what airlines to book to what you need to pack to what you need to know about the trip so you will get lots of emails and also you can also you can also correct me if i'm wrong uh camilla you can see who's actually on the trip right mm -hmm. Yep. So, if you know, if you know some of your friends screen names and you can look for those and see if they booked on the trip as well. Yep. So we have every every trip has um, a way to see what you're going to see. There's a, you know, a questions topic. And then one of them is we call it the number four topic. It's who's going and who's doing what. So, of course, we don't list a last name, but um you know, it'll say Nicole, a.k.a. Nicole. Well, you know who that's going to be. Um, it'll say Kamala, a.k.a. Wreck Wench. Um, so you can pretty much figure out how many people are going. You can kind of figure out. And, and sometimes we do put 4C next to your name. Um, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It kind of depends on the person who's managing that trip. Um, and if that was something that Nicole always wanted us to do, I'm sure we could do that so that you could tell at a glance how many 4C people were signed up. But you're going to have a blast whether 
Um, and, and here's what I also like is that people who come from the dive shop are ambassadors of the dive shop and they tell other people on the boat about this amazing dive shop. And next thing you know, um, they're calling up on the phone going, um, Nicole, I'm coming down and I met some wonderful people from 4C and I'd like to do some dives at the bridge or I'd like to get certified. I might get my advanced and, and, you know, can you help me? And of course, if not Nicole directly, then anyone at the shop can help you. And so it's a great, um, it's really a great synergistic relationship because um, you guys get to travel with one of the best travel companies and our clients get to be associated with one of the best dive shops anywhere in the U.S. Awesome. Thank you, Kamala. You are so, welcome. I've been to a lot of dive shops. I can say <laughs> that one with absolute pride. <laughs> well, Kamala, I have a question. Have Are you, uh, you got it on your calendar? Are you going to join us this Saturday for our grand opening of our Boynton Beach 4C Scuba Center? I was until my mom fell and broke her hip. Now I'm in oh. Texas. It was on the calendar, but it's not <laughs> anymore. That's right, guys. Um, just a little bit. I'll tell you in a little bit about the grand opening, but let's, let me finish this. So, um, so if you have a special, um, you know, favorite 4C staff member, tell them you want to go on this trip so that they can get more people on it so that they can also go on the trip with you. Okay. So make sure that when you're communicating with uh, single divers, that you let them know that the staff member that you want to be working with. So, um, you know, I do know that we've got a couple of people who love to travel with you guys. So make sure you talk to them and, and uh, get yourself signed up. All right. So hold on guys. Let me, let me come back over here and get this out of here. And there we are. Okay, perfect. Okay, there we are. Hey. hey. <laughs> I know everyone didn't really see us at, uh, in, in the uh, presentation. It just worked out that the the video, the the pictures look better than. Oh, your slides are perfect. No problem. <laughs> um, okay, so let me pull up here. Hold on. Doo -doo -doo. Here we go. Um, let's see if I am able to pull this up. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. Okay. Oh, screen share. There we go. Let's see if this is going to work. Okay. While you're doing that, I, I remembered something else I wanted to tell people. Bonaire is one of those unique destinations that if you've never been, you definitely have to put it on your bucket list trip. But even if you've been there, it's like you never get tired of going there. It's so special and so unique that it's something that you don't mind doing over and over. Says the woman that thought she would do a couple trips to Bonaire and we're now on like 20 years in a row. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm trying to pull this up, you guys. So sorry. You know, technology, technology. Can't live with it. Can't live without it. That's right. Okay. Now we should have it up. Here we go. Okay. Let me get, there we go. All right. So as I was saying, if you guys are interested in checking out our 4C Boynton Beach store, the grand opening is this Saturday. So what does that mean, guys? Our Boynton Beach store is located at 270 North Congress Avenue. And we are open on Saturday from 7 to 7. And we have lots of goodies planned for you for that day. So if you want to come on down, the store is open. It is ready. And we are ready to receive you. So you can come check it out and see what we, how we laid it out, all the beautiful artwork that's in it. And also um, check out all the cool merchandise that we uh, stocked in the store. So... Um, we are full service. We uh, do have the compressor running right now. Um, we do need to do a couple of tweaks, but we should have it up and running for the weekend. So um, that is a question that a lot of people had. We're really excited for that. So make sure you come by this weekend. Saturday is the grand opening, but um, you know, starting this weekend, we are fully open and ready for you guys to come on in and take a look at our new beautiful shop in Boynton Beach. We're really excited and we hope you guys are too. All I'm right. So, so bummed I'm going to miss it. <laughs> I know. Okay. So um, let's see. To 
click exit click to exit okay did we have any questions well hold on one second i wanted to oh, sorry no that's okay i wanted to play this um oh, quick yeah video. it's a good video so hold on let me let me get this up and actually we answered most of the questions um oh, so <laughs> okay let's see uh is everybody able to see oh my gosh you know technology here we go can everyone see this let's see <laughs> Okay, clearly it doesn't like full screen. So let's go into regular screen, guys. Oh, goodness. You got to love. Okay, here we go, guys. video didn't entice you to want to come to Bonaire with us, then I'm not sure what's going to entice you because that looked fantastic. Beautiful blue water, gorgeous dive sites, a gorgeous uh, resort and hotel and a casino pool and spa, and also great people. So, <laughs> um, Guys, so we just wanted to quickly answer a few questions. One, if you did not see how to get onto the VIP program, that's not a problem. All you got to do is send an email to, I'm going to type it in the comment section, send email to travel at force-e.com and say, I want to be on the VIP Okay, that's how you get started. Okay, um, some people are asking a few questions. Um, they wanted to know about spear fishing. Uh, they do not allow spear fishing in Bonaire, um, and they don't even have. Um, you can't even bring the spear guns. I don't think into the country, but no. uh, they, you know, as far as lionfish removal, um, some of the people on the island are specially permitted to do that. I believe. Um, but you can't they offer a special class and, mm -hmm. um, there's, it's kind of a hoopla to do it. So it's not something that most people have been able to do, but they've actually been hunting them. You really won't see very many. I mean, it's just so nice to go diving someplace and really not see them at all. And they, they've hunted them enough that, that they don't see them. So, yep. Um, and then there was one other question. I'm sorry we didn't answer earlier about the house reef. Um, someone was asking, do you have to be a, a divvy, be, stay at the divvy to, to dive the house reef or can you come on site? Do you know, Kamala? Um, I believe that you can, um, you'd have to check into the property in order to gain access. Um, but I believe that it's, I believe you can dive it. It may be a private it may be a private site that's accessible only by boat or from the guest. But um, if they wanted to pop that travel with, uh, you know, travel at 4C email, 
um, I'd be happy to follow up for them and get them an express answer on that. Okay. And um, that's about it. We've answered all the questions. We've given you all the details. So let's um, go. You know I just saw a question oh. that reminded me something we should remind sure. people. Divi has spent over a million dollars refurbishing their property. And it is gorgeous. The restaurants have been redone. The rooms have all been redone. There's still a few rooms that aren't done. But most of the rooms we get in our block are all the refurbished rooms. So the, the property is gorgeous. And then somebody else had already had asked why we don't do full meal plan there. And that's because there's just too many amazing restaurants. Some of the best foodies in the world migrate to Bonaire. Some of the best chefs in the world migrate to Bonaire. So you can't, no local restaurant can basically compete with world caliber food um, that you can find restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. So we put two group dinners into the package so that we have plenty of camaraderie and they're, they're exceptionally good, but we give you the opportunity to go and experience the best of the best in Bonaire. And again, you can walk there. There's only one or two places that are in the top, um, top, you know, have to see list that you might have to take a taxi to. The rest of it is all walking distance from Divi, which is the only resort that you don't actually have to drive everywhere you want to go from. So. Yep. Excellent. And then, sorry, last minute question came in. Um, you know, do we see any large marine life? If so, what, um, you know, we do get the occasional, um, nurse sharks and we also get the spotted eagle rays. And then as Kim was saying, uh, the, there's a resident, um, manta yeah. ray. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but they don't really get like the big pelagic sharks that you're probably inquiring they about. They do on the Northern side, but the, the waves are so variable that mm -hmm. nobody is going to tolerate 10 and 15 foot waves.